What's up everyone? Today I'm going to debunk the top 10 myths that are used by climate change deniers. We all know these people are lunatics and sometimes it's difficult for climate conservatives to prove them wrong. So I'm going to go over their most common claims one at a time to end the debate once and for all. Myth number one, water vapor is a much stronger greenhouse gas than CO2. I mean, yeah, that's true, but what they aren't explaining is that CO2 is the worst greenhouse gas. Adding CO2 to the atmosphere is practically as bad as adding water vapor to the atmosphere. And there's a theory that it could cause a runaway greenhouse effect. Basically, what that means is when the Earth's temperature rises even the slightest bit, it'll make more water evaporate, adding more greenhouse gas to the atmosphere, which would then trap more heat, leading to more water vapor and more heat until the Earth reaches 1400 degrees Celsius, the oceans boil away, and we're all dead. As of right now, nobody knows why climate change hasn't caused this to happen, but we're sure it will. Deniers also like to use this graph to claim that CO2 exponentially holds less heat and that the most heat is held by the first 20 parts per million. They claim that the exponential increase in our CO2 output and the lack of exponential increase in global temperature is evidence of this. The truth is that a simple science experiment can easily prove that CO2 makes sealed jars warmer. And Venus has a lot of CO2 and it's hot. So because science is based on observation, that's all the proof we need and now it's one of the laws of science. Myth number two, Earth's temperature is always changing naturally. It's true that the Earth's temperature changes naturally. Earth goes through ice ages, and we're actually in one right now. According to climate science, an ice age is defined as the Earth having polar ice caps. I should also add that during these ice ages, the Earth goes through what's called glacial and interglacial periods. Glacial periods are when the temperature drops, and they last around 100,000 years. Interglacial periods are when the temperature rises, and they last about 15,000 years. Anyway, climate change deniers use this information to claim that because we're currently in an interglacial period of an ice age, it's totally normal for us to experience global temperature and sea level rises. They also point out that CO2 was 10 times higher during the Precambrian Ice Age. While that is true, what deniers are forgetting is that our current interglacial period is already 15,000 years old, which means the global temperature should be dropping significantly while we sink back into a glacial period. The fact that it isn't going to drop in the future doesn't seem to be enough evidence for them. They also fail to explain why 97% of climate scientists agree that CO2 is a greenhouse gas and ice ages have nothing to do with climate change. Myth number three, CO2 makes the earth greener. The increased CO2 accelerates the growth rates of plants and also permits plants to grow in drier regions. Animal life, which depends upon plants, also flourishes and the diversity of plant and animal life is increased. Again, this is true, but what they're forgetting is that bigger plants are gonna need more water. Some places on Earth, like the Sahara Desert, have little to no water, so these bigger plants are gonna die very quickly. On the other hand, due to climate change, we're experiencing more rainfall, but too much rainfall will cause flooding and all the plants and animals will drown. An increased temperature would also make plants and animals migrate to regions that humans aren't used to them being in, and then they would be considered invasive species and we would be forced to kill them. So, no matter how you look at it, if we don't do something about climate change soon, younger generations will be forced to live in a tropical paradise. Myth number four, there is no consensus. The petition project features over 31,000 scientists, including over 9,000 with PhDs, signing a petition stating, there is no convincing scientific evidence that human release of carbon dioxide will, in the foreseeable future, cause catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, this one is hilarious. Climate deniers like to use it to claim that climate change isn't settled science. Petitionproject.org was created by a bunch of nutjob climate scientists after they were told that climate science was no longer up for debate. Basically, these idiots wrote up a paper explaining why current climate change theories were questionable and claimed CO2 is beneficial to plant life. Then they sent it around to over 30,000 scientists for review and tricked them all into signing it. The paper basically explains all the usual climate denier rhetoric and uses data to prove it. They like to brag about how over 9,000 of the people who signed it are PhDs employed at respected institutions. These pseudoscientists claim that climate change was pushed by the United Nations so it could start a global energy tax and control the rationing of energy. The only problem with their whole petition is that 97% of climate scientists agree climate change is settled science. It's not up for debate. That's not how it works. Settled science doesn't change just because a bunch of scientists signed a piece of paper. Once a scientific question is settled, you're not supposed to question it. At least not unless you want to lose your credibility. Think of climate science like a religion. If a priest started compiling data that proved the Bible wasn't written by God and then started tricking other priests into signing it, he wouldn't be a priest for much longer. And I'm pretty sure all those people were blacklisted from working as scientists by now. Unfortunately for them, they never learned the number one rule of being a scientist. You don't question scientific consensus. Myth number five. 
Al Gore's mansion in Carthage, Tennessee used 230,889 kilowatt hours of energy in 2015, compared to the average American home using 9,000 kilowatt hours, and it's evidence that Al Gore is only pretending to be worried about climate change. First off, this statement is wrong because it's not his Carthage, Tennessee mansion that uses all this power, it's his new mansion on the California coast. Second, just because Al Gore made over $200 million from promoting the climate change crisis doesn't make him the climate change ambassador. And third, just because he bought a mansion next to the ocean doesn't mean he was lying about the sea level rising and swallowing up property. There could be any number of reasons why he didn't take that into account when he was looking for new property. Number six, the sea level has been rising consistently for centuries and shows no correlation to the increasing output of CO2. Check out this timeline of the sea level created by NASA. This myth is easily proven wrong by pointing out that in the year 2000, 85% of CO2 was created after 1945, and then drawing lines on this graph showing the sharp increase after that date. Does this look consistent to you? Deniers like to twist this data to claim its evidence are exponentially increasing CO2 output doesn't correlate with the sea level increase. But the red lines I've drawn easily prove otherwise. Myth number seven, natural disasters are natural. Another claim that's obviously a lie. The fact is that 97% of climate scientists agree that natural disasters are caused by humans burning fossil fuels and changing the climate. Just look at this graph that proves natural disasters have been on the rise since the mid 40s. Ignore the part that shows them declining after the year 2000. That part has nothing to do with the point I'm trying to make. Deniers like to twist this data by pointing out that it shows zero natural disasters for some years. And they claim it's because they were happening, we just didn't record them. They also like to claim that after the 40s with the invention of computers and other technology, our ability to record natural disasters quickly increased. This couldn't be further from the truth. The truth is that natural disasters were virtually non-existent before the 1940s. Coincidentally, do you know what else started in the 40s? Jeeps, they were invented in the 40s, at the same time that CO2 started making the natural disasters. And 97% of scientists agree that Jeeps produce CO2. Myth number eight, climate change is caused by nuclear weapons. Another lie. The truth is that 97% of climate scientists agree that climate change has nothing to do with the 2,476 nuclear detonations totaling over 540,000 kilotons of explosions that started in the mid 40s and ended around the year 2000. If they had any information that proved nuclear detonations can negatively affect Earth's climate, I'm sure they would have stopped detonating them decades ago. The fact is, all those detonations are incapable of affecting Earth's delicate ecosystems, and they definitely can't affect Earth's orbit or rotation in any way. Not that shifting Earth's orbit or rotation could have any effect on weather patterns, it can't. We know this because the 2011 Japanese earthquake shifted Earth's axis, and we aren't experiencing any climate change because of it. 97% of climate scientists agree the climate change we're experiencing is caused by CO2, and scientific consensus has never been wrong. Myth number nine, the Paris Agreement is a ridiculous global welfare program that uses scare tactics to demand money from developed countries and disperse it to undeveloped countries. Deniers like to claim that it makes no sense for the United States and other countries to donate $100 billion a year to developing countries like China and India to stop them from making greenhouse gases. But 97% of climate scientists agree that we should be donating hundreds of billions of dollars to China and India because they're developing countries and CO2 is causing climate change. We don't need to invest that money in ways to pull CO2 out of the air. We already know trees do that. And even if we wanted to solve the problem by planting more trees, we still need to give China our money so they can afford to buy them. Where do you think trees come from? It's not like they grow on tr It's not like they're made from thin... The point is trees cost money. That's why 97% of climate scientists agree that we should get the ball rolling by giving hundreds of billions of dollars to India and China in hopes that they spend the money on something useful. Maybe they could use the money to invent solar powered machines that can pull CO2 out of the air the same way trees do. That would solve the problem, wouldn't it? The truth is that anyone who doesn't support giving hundreds of billions of dollars to countries like China and India is an anti-science idiot who doesn't care about our environment. Myth number 10, the great horse manure crisis of 1894 is a perfect example of humans panicking like idiots because of doomsday predictions. For anyone who's unfamiliar, this refers to an 1894 publication in the Times that claimed every street in London would be buried in horse manure within 50 years. This belief was caused by the fact that cities were quickly growing, horses were the most efficient mode of transportation with London having over 50,000 of them, and they each create 20 pounds of manure per day. This led experts to predict that by 1950, the entire city of London would be buried under nine feet of horse manure. 
This problem, which seemed impossible to solve at the time, was easily solved by the advancement of technology. In this case, it was the invention of cars. Deniers like to use this analogy to claim that problems only seem world-ending when you forget that technology always advances. Cars might have solved the manure problem, which as we now know was never a real problem to begin with, but it caused the CO2 problem, which 97% of climate scientists agree is the cause of climate change. Within 50 years, Earth is going to be a hot oven filled with black CO2 smoke, and there's almost nothing we can do to stop it at this point. Some scientists even think it'll happen sooner than that. Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, for example, says that the Earth is going to end within 12 years. To sum it all up, CO2 was increasing during the 20th century, so any climate changes during that time are obviously caused by CO2. It's settled science, and anyone who even thinks about questioning it will be rightfully labeled a heretic and have their entire livelihood destroyed. If getting publicly shamed isn't enough to stop you from questioning science, I don't know what to tell you, you're just an anti-science idiot.